the Song of Solomon. Can you hear my dog snoring? No. Howdy, everyone, and welcome to the Word, Praise, and Wisdom number, what'd you say, 42? 42. 42. That's uh, 40 plus 2. 2 and 40, if you're a King James speaker. How are you doing, Lynn? I am doing. Good. That is excellent. So if you want to, you can go to the kingjamesbibleonline.org, blueletterbible.org, esword.net.org, or you can pick up a book. It's a strange thing made out of paper and ink. Okay, today we are continuing on in... in Chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, and finishing out the entire book with chapter 8 of the Song of Solomon. So let us pray before we get started here. Father, thank you very much for uh, bringing us together to fellowship and uh, to read this, this book and we would ask that about your, your spirit of knowledge and discernment on us uh, so that we get the message that you need us to get. We also want to thank you for all the new lives that will be joining us. We're very grateful for that. And we would ask that uh, everybody here now and in the future, if you put us in a position to, to help these new lives and those around them, that uh, you do so. We know you will provide so that we can provide a good name for, for you and your son. And we just want to thank you for that. It's a blessing. We love you. In Jesus Yeshua's name, amen. All righty. You know what? Let's do that. And since we've been sharing so well, since we've been playing together so well, we're going to let you read along with us unless you want to read along in a different version. Okay, Song of Solomon, chapter 4. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast a dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof every one bears twins, and none is barren among them. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Thy neck is within the, I'm sorry, thy neck is like the tower of David builded for an armory, whereon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins, which feed among the lilies. Until the daybreak and the shadows flee away, then I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse. With me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shanir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. Thou hast ravaged my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravaged my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, camphire and spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters and streams from Lebanon. Awake! O north wind, and come thou 
south, blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. Chapter 5. I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends, drink. Ye drink abundantly, ye drink abundantly O beloved. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocking, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drop of the night. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved, and my hands dropped with myrrh, and my fingers with sweet-smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen that went about the city found me. They smote me. They wounded me. Keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick of love. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou dost so charge us? My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. His head as is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and his black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of water washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies dropping sweet smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is almost is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Song of Solomon 6. Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? My beloved is gone down into his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tisra, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Turn away thine eyes from me, for they have overcome me. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. Thy teeth are as a flock of sheep which go up from the washing, whereof every one beareth twins, and there is not one barren among them. As a piece of a pomegranate are thy temples within thy locks. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother, and she is the choice one of her that bear her. The daughters saw her and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. Or Ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of a minidib. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will ye see in the Shulamite, as it were the company of two armies? Chapter 7. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter! The joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. Thy navel is like a round goblet which wandered, which wanteth not liquor. Thy belly is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. Thy neck is of a tower of ivory. Thine eyes like the fish pools in Heshbon. By the gate, Bath Rabin, thy nose is the tower of Lebanon which looketh toward Damascus. Thine head upon me is like Carmel, and the hair of thine head like purple. 
the king is held in the galleries. How fair and how pleasant are the O love for delights. This thy stature is like to a palm tree and thy breast to cluster of grapes. I said, I will go up to the palm trees. I will take hold of the boughs thereof. Now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine and the smell of thy nose like apples. And the roof of thy mouth like the best wine for my beloved that goes down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vines flourish, whether the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my loves. The mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. Song of Solomon 8. O oh, that thou wert as my brother that sucked the breasts of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, yea, I should not be despised. I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. Who would instruct me? I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate. His left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. If she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. I am a wall, and my breasts like towers. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman. He let out the vineyard unto keepers. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, which is mine before me, thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof, two hundred. Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice. Cause me to hear it. Make haste, my beloved. And be thou like to a row or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices. Okay. What do you got, Lynn? Besides being muted. What do you oh, got, Lynn? It does get kind of racy. So we know we're talking about Solomon, but who is this woman? Good question. Sounds like he is smitten with one of his hundreds of wives and concubines. And she stands out among them, among those many. You know, this may be a distraction, but something that kept coming up in this If there are any of you young men out there seeking a wife, I want you to try these pickup lines and see how they work. <laughs> <laughs> your body, your body is like that of a goat that <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. Your nose is like a tower. Um, <laughs> it's interesting because our society is so vain at this point in time that anything 
I'm sure anything like this would be seen as an insult. You know, be taken as an insult. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to try something. Oh, that doesn't work. That doesn't work either. Okay, we'll go back to that. What if we go to this? We shrunk. Okay. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Are you? No. Nope. Think, think that's bad. Nope, you can't do it. You oh, just keep pushing this. me around here. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, okay, did anything really jump out at you in this? Well, yeah. Okay. It got really racy. It did. I mean, chapter four it did. Right. And then chapter five did. All of them, pretty much. Where do you where do you think this is in the timeline of Solomon's writings? Well, it has to be kind of early on because he's got a bunch of concubines, apparently. Um, wonder how long it took him to get so many. I don't know. That you know, hmm. I would I would think it may be very much like uh, like we see in in the the princess movies or the princess fairy tales that people are just kind of throwing their daughters at the king. You know, maybe my daughter will be the one that bears him the the prince that becomes king. That sort of thing. And then she'll be queen. Right. And also for uh, peace between nations, you know. Right. Diplomatic right. reasons. That one too. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. In that, uh, but apparently there's this one woman that stuck out. And I was wondering, you know, it's, I, I don't see anything that really jumps out at me other than the raciness. Uh, and, you know, I just cannot see coming up to a, a, a woman you want to be your, your wife, your, the bearer of your children, your, your teeth are like a flock of sheep, but just, I don't, <laughs> you know, are you saying I have hee-haw teeth? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The but like I say, there's a definitely a cultural difference here. Um Yeah, because thy neck is like the Tower of David builded for Harry. <laughs> yeah. That, um, looking at, yeah, looking at five, I mean it's just the same the same. You know, we have a, a like verse four, we have a totally different vision. We say our, our heart pitter patters, but they say my bowels moved, you know, my bowels were moved for him. Right. He, he put, you know, okay. He, so yeah, because verse four in chapter five, uh, what, <laughs> I'm like, what, what hole by the door? Yeah. You are so beautiful. You are moving my bowels, honey. Oh, um, see. The, no. <laughs> that, I do like when it talks about the spike nard and the, uh, right. the sulfur and the calamus and all the frankincenses and the myrrhs and the aloes. And and then they mix some like some cinnamon in there. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I love all that. I do, too. That, I'll go the, smell all of it when we get done here. Yeah, we found some spike nard growing wild when we were... Oh, yeah. At Sukkot last year. It Fantastic. Was, uh, it is like the best smelling stuff. It's almost cat it is. for people. Yeah. And if you wanted to order a bottle of it, you could order it. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful little tiny, tiny white flowers. Oh, yeah. But so, Expensive. so good smelling. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, and it, it's interesting. You know, what about 10 and 11? Because those almost seem 
contradictory to one another, right? My beloved is white and ruddy. And ruddy. <laughs> right? White and ruddy. Well, I mean, basically that brings to my mind the, you know, a hardworking Englishman in the field that's just flushed in the face. Um, but then the ne very next verse, his head is as the most fine gold. Okay, well, that sounds like blonde hair, but then his locks are bushy and black as a raven. It could be, you've seen those, if you've seen those people that uh, have like super light blonde hair and then their beard is, is like dark brown. I don't know. Or their eyebrows are, are dark. Right. <clears throat> well, if you look up that meaning for that word, white, it means mm -hmm. the chief word is dazzling. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Suck. So, dazzling. not necessarily white. So basically, to me, that would be what we would call... Uh, you know, it's not even common today, but when I was younger, when, when they say someone was strikingly handsome, you know, or brutally handsome, that sort of thing, uh, when they walk into a, a room, it's like everybody pays attention. Yeah, they're shiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny stuff. Right, basically. Yeah, I don't think I'd win many men talking about his belly like that, or. Right, right. <laughs> like, what you talking about, woman? <laughs> uh, right, right. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's go to six. Is there okay. anything that jumps out at you on this one? Um, well, this one gets even more racy. I mean, yeah. but but it's very interesting. I, um, very interesting how they're naming uh, these places. Right. Right. Actually, this must have been pretty early on because in verse eight, Right, there are three score queens, so sixty queens, and four score concubines. So that would be, you know, that's forty, eighty, and sixty. Right. And virgins without numbers. And virgins without number, but this one stands out from all of those. Yeah. Must have been early on. Before so what? Who was next after Solomon? Rehoboam? Uh, was uh let's see here. I'd have to look at let me are you gonna look? I'm trying to look up the timeline. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see who gets it first. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so makes me wonder if she's the one that gave birth to him, right? Mm -hmm. To his heir, to the one that took the throne afterwards. Um, so that's in First Kings, First Kings, and Second Chronicles. So First Kings. 12. Yeah, Rehoboam. Rehoboam. Yep. Rehoboam. So who was his mom? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. Rehoboam. Let me look up here. Uh, uh, how do you spell it? Uh, yeah. R E H. He Boem, right? 
behind your feet. Excellent. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, it's funny because this in the Smith's Bible dictionary right here, it says Solomon's personal appearance. We have no direct description, but we look to the Song of Solomon, or the Song of Songs. Let's see here. Quite a bit there, though. All right. Anyways, it's the literary mm -hmm. news. <clears throat> okay. So, anything else from six? jumping out again. Um, See, this like has a totally different meaning today. She's talking about him, right? And says, I went down into the garden of nuts to see the, I know. See the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished, right? And that, I've been accused of being a nut. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry, you were going to say something? Oh, no, I wasn't. Oh. So the Shulamite woman. Yeah, the Shulamite. Was that uh, Elijah that was, wasn't that the woman, a, a, a Shulamite that had the meal, the Shulamite widow? The, yes, I think it was. So peaceful. Oh. Safe, make, related, friendly, reciprocate. Okay. Interesting. All right, let's see what anything, was there anything massively huge in seven? It gets not more massive, Not massively huge. Not for me anyway. Oh, right. Well, there we talking about the mandrakes, right? Is that the first time we've ever heard about the man mandrakes in the word? I mean, uh, I don't, I don't remember. That's the, interesting. But like this one, your two breasts are like two young rows. I know. Better yeah. Hold on to um, those; they run away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, and then and then it goes into like clusters of grapes. Clusters of, of the vine, yes. Right. And the smell of thy nose like apples. That's that was kind of interesting. Yeah, but notice it's all agricultural compliments too. So I mean, mm -hmm. it's a totally different society. Yes. You know, even if he is king of a of a mighty nation. Yeah, there's still that that connection agriculturally. Hmm. And that now is that word mandrakes mandrakes. Here's seven one seven three six dudai. A boiler or basket, also the mandrake. As an aphrodisiac. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Okay, now what? we know. <laughs> <clears throat> Boo -hoo. Okay. Let's, <laughs> Let's go to eight. Yeah. Oh, there is one thing. Oh, from that seven? Kind of jumped out at me throughout this whole air, this whole. Oh, from everything? Okay. Yeah. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. So right. that's said over and over again. Right. Just let him sleep. Right. What do you think that has to do with? I. 
let him sleep because the longer he sleeps, he stays with me. I, I don't know. Stir up or wake. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. Very interesting. As we were reading this too, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, the description of Solomon as king is the only other place where it's mentioned, where the number 666 is mentioned. So it's, hmm. I don't know. I, I believe I'm, well, I'm questioning if this should have been included in canonized scripture. Makes me wonder. Right. Because and let alone as a as a book of wisdom. I mean, there's really nothing in this that points to Jesus or our Father. Or salvation. I mean, I, or it, yeah, or salvation. Or mercy or repentance. Yeah, any of it. It's just uh, like a here you go. Here's a little break in, in the. Yeah, and now for our intermission. Right, we're gonna throw this in randomly for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't hmm. believe it should have been included. That's just my opinion. Go ahead and talk about metaphors and all sorts of stuff. But either way, even with metaphors that we have read before in Psalms and Proverbs and the prophets, they all pointed to Jesus, Yeshua, salvation, mercy, forgiveness, to our Father, to Him being our Father, not hundreds of brides and... You know, the, the word for bride and concubine is the same word most often. And I, I don't think it should have been included. But that's my opinion. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> and, uh, if you live in a farming community, I guess you got some pickup lines now. <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm not even going there. Don't uh, compare her to a chicken or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> or a cow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that hasn't been, that wouldn't be good advice from my experience. The, I think I'm going to write some poems today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, we're sorry that we seem to be being flippant, but. <laughs> sorry. Sometimes nope. you got to laugh. Yeah. Everybody, we love you all. Like, share, subscribe. Bell thingy. ding a ling a ling Your bell reminds me of a cow's udder. Okay. Anyways. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> it's utterly horrible. I love you all. We will talk to you soon. Bye.